Good evening. This is Christy Hartman. We are going to talk about paint. I get asked a lot about which paints do I like the best. And honestly, I like different paints for different reasons. And tonight, we're not going to really talk about and compare the, these different paints. We are just going to talk about how does each one of these paints react on the gel plate and what types of uses and purposes do they serve. Start with a paint that you have. Practice with it. Get used to it. Familiarize yourself with how it works on the gel plate and then branch out from there. I'm only going to talk about paints that I have, paints that I, I use consistently, and paints that I'm happy and I get consistent results with. So we're going to talk about three different types of deco art paints. The Americana, the Fluid Acrylic, and the premium acrylic paint. We're going to talk about two different golden paints. We're going to talk about their high flow, and we're going to talk about the open. I'm going to touch briefly on the Amsterdam and then the Blick Studio acrylics. You actually can use almost any water soluble media on the gel plate. Just make sure it won't harm your gel plate. We're going to start out with the Golden High Flow. This is a super fun technique. What I'm going to show you is on these examples, you see that the backgrounds have almost a resist. Be careful that you don't use too much paint in this technique. You want just a little bit and that's about enough. And this happens to be the Quinn Nickel Azo Gold. So I'm going to lightly brayer this out onto my gel plate. And if it does what it sh is supposed to do, it will start, and I don't know if you can see that, so it's like it's pushing that paint away. All right, so I took the gel plate off of my acrylic block and you can hopefully see all of that great texture. But I'm gonna let it dry completely and then I'm gonna do a pull-up print. But while we wait, I'm gonna do a different color which is Quinn Magenta. This time, same amount of paint, or approximately. Brayer it out. And it doesn't have to be brayered out perfectly. Re the gel plate is starting to resist the paint. I'm gonna grab a piece of paper, set it down, Place my gel plate right over the top of this and just let it sit there. Turn it over, adhere the paper to my gel plate and I'm going to let it sit. And I'm going to pull this print up off my gel plate. And look at that. Look at that cool texture. Now, so let's do a pull-up print. I'm going to use just basic acrylic paint, put a little over the top of it, brayer it out, place my paper, And that is what it's going to look like. I'm going to position it, pull it over, brayer over the top of it. Now here's another tool that those of you who are experienced printers might want to use. This is called a Baron, and this is a Speedball Baron, and it has kind of a cushy 
base to it and you can go over the top of this and it will help your paper to adhere to your print. All right. You can see all of that really beautiful texture. I'm going to use this really, really beautiful and larger circled Punchinella. And I buy this Punchinella from an Etsy store which is called Key Lime Supplies. And Moira at that Etsy shop, Key Lime Supplies, has the most incredible selection of Punchinella and I just love it. So I will probably put her name on the bottom and I will encourage you to go look at Moira's shop. I recently showed you their Americana paint right here which is their basic craft paint which is actually a very good paint and is good for gel printing. These two are more of an artist quality paint and are very much higher in pigment than the others. I find that a high pigment paint gives really lovely results but you could certainly use this technique with a craft paint. What you might find happening with a craft paint because the craft paints have a little bit more filler to them and less pigment is that you have a hard time getting your paint to remain when we remove some of our paint. Alright, so I've brayered my paint out onto my 3 by 5 inch gel plate and I'm going to position the punchinella and I'm just going to gently and carefully just take another it. piece of paper and all I'm using is scrapbooking paper and I'm going to remove most of the paint that's on that gel plate. I could also use deli paper for this but I have found that by doing this I'm not wasting as much paint although I can certainly use my deli paper prints for anything that I, I'm using a regular paper print for but I find I like to use the paper for this and remove as much of that paint as I possibly can and I get a stunning print and then I'm going to remove my punchinella and you can see where the paint stays on the punchinella I'm going to grab my print that I just made and I'm going to place that print right over the top of this and what did I just do? Well, here was from my punchinella this print is the negative image because that's in between all of the pattern of the punchinella so this is my negative image. I then put my positive image down over the top so that the negative space shows through that design. And I'm going to just let that sit there for just a while so that it adheres. Let's grab my gel plate. Use a little white. And this is again the DecoArt Media Fluid Acrylics, but I could also use the Golden Fluid Acrylics, and I have a Titan Buff in that, but I think I'm going to try this one. I don't need a lot of paint. If you are finding that your Punchinella or your stencil is lifting too much of your paint. It might be that you have too much paint that's accumulated on your punchinella or your stencil. Too much paint will actually cause the paint to lift. Now I don't want white 
all over this. I just want a row of it right here. So I'm just going to lay this down over the top of a section of my punchinella and I'm going to rub right over the top of it. And then I also like to check and it kind of list lifted kind of grungily and then I'm going to try it again on this one. And I don't want this whole thing so I'm going to just take it over to the edge. And my paint had actually dried a little too much on my gel plate. You can see that right here. But that's okay. I'm going to let this dry completely and then I can lift this and I can get another complete print. I'll be back in a second. Alright, let's lift this for the big reveal. It didn't all pull up, but that's okay. I like the look of that. That looks great, actually. So, let's deal with this one. And we have all of this incredible texture on this gel plate, and I would not want to waste it. So, I thought what we'd do is use a little bit of this premium acrylic from DecoArt, and we'll just do a pull-up print. And this is actually pyrrole red. I'm going to go right over the top of it, grab a piece of paper, set it down, and I'm going to set that down right over the top of it. I'm going to use my Baron. Let that sit. If when you do a pull-up print, this is still really, really wet, chances are good that you're not going to get a good pull. You need to have this be as dry as possible when you pull this up to get a good print. Let's use this magenta print. We have a little bit of white over here from our dot. This is another piece of Punchinella from Key Lime Supplies and I love this one. This is an egg shaped pattern. Let's grab our gel plate and let's use a paint color over the top of this that I think would work. Let's try a gold and just a little bit. You're going to get a feel for the amount of paint that you need to develop your pattern and texture and that just comes with practice. Place this over the top. I'm going to get a clean piece of paper and remove as much of that paint as I possibly can. And there is my beautiful gold print. And that looks actually pretty darn good. It's very subtle but I'm going to lay it right down over the top of this. We'll see if it shows up. And I think if I turn it, you can see it in there. There we go. And that is going to be really, really subtle. But it's going to be really beautiful. I like a touch of gold on a print. So I'm going to let that sit and adhere and I'll be right back. Yeah, this one is pulling up. So there we go. It's very, very subtle, but it's going to be really pretty. See, let's check this one. I can always pull up a corner and see if I can pull up from my print. It's not going to pull up perfectly, but it's going to pull up pretty well. But in the interest of time, I'm just going to leave that on my plate and let it dry. There we 
we're going to add a little bit of gold to this print. And we're going to use the premium. And I'm going to use this star piece of punchinella. I'm going to lay it down. And I'm going to take this one. This is a registration way that I do it, as I just kind of fold this back, find where my edges are, and then guess. It works for me. I get those gold stars. Just like that. And that's actually really lovely. And I have quite a bit left, so I think I will just use this one and pull up anything that I have left, which won't be a lot, but I'd like a little bit more gold on there. Yeah, got a little bit more gold on there, you can see it. I'm going to pull this up. And I'm going to take this print and I'm going to lay that ghost image right over the top of this. And let it sit and adhere. All right, I think we can pull this off now. So let's see what the big reveal looks like. Oh yeah, very, very pretty. I like that. I really like that. You can see that? That is just beautiful. This one, this one that we did, and we have this one. And we also did this one when we used, when we added the gold ghost print to the other print. I like to use an old book, and this is just an old textbook. And I like to use an old book to clean off my brayer. And all I do is in between my rolling out my paint, I clean it off onto this book paper. And then I like to use these. Sometimes they're a great color. And I go through these and I find a page that I really like the way it looks or the quality of the paint, which that is really nice and opaque. Um, and then I'll use it for my background. And it, it saves on having to come up with a background print. And as I'm looking through this, well, I like that one. All right, that one or this one. Something similar to this sample. So let's, let's do a little printing on this. I'm going to use a little bit of this green gold, and I'm going to use just a makeup sponge. Just a little bit of interest to this piece. Just like that. I'm going to use my fluid acrylics. I'm going to brayer out some white. And I'm going to lay this down on the side just like this and pull up that pattern. Let that dry. Pull up some more just on a piece. Pull that up. Decide where I want this. And I think I want it down here at the bottom. Place it. And I'm going to let it sit. Let's see if this pulls up. a little bit. I think you can see it. And then I have a lot of this still here. And then go right over the top of this and 
see what happens. Let's see what happens. That's what gel printing is all about, is seeing what happens. Okay. That pulled up nicely. So now I have that circular pattern and a little bit more color in my background, and but I still have some of the green showing through. My five by seven inch plate. And let's add a little bit of a gold enhancement over the top. I used a stencil here. We're going to use Punchinello. We're going to talk about using Golden Open. Golden Open is a paint which has um, an extender already added to it and it's that allows you to work for a fairly long period of time. Golden Open, I realize, is more expensive. I would wait. I would make sure that you're happy gel printing because it is an investment. Not only can you work for an extended period of time, you also have to let it dry for an extended period of time. So now you can see I still have quite a bit of gold on my plate and I'm just going to use just another piece of book paper to see if I can pull up some more of that gold paint. Mm, yeah, I got a little bit more of it pulled up. We're also going to use a piece of deli paper. This is deli paper. It's, you can buy it on Amazon. You can get it at restaurant supply stores. What it works great for is pulling up any left paint that you might have still on your gel plate. All right, let's pull this off. And that looks lovely. I'm going to lay my print down, put this right over the top of it. Okay, and that needs to sit for a little while. Okay, big reveal. Again, it's subtle, but I think you can see where all that gold shimmers on this. Let's do some printing with actual plants. These were actual plants that I pressed um, in my flower press this summer. These are Indian paintbrush. Let's begin by using our 5 by 7 inch plate. We're going to use two little plants that I just pressed recently when we were out in the mountains. These are going to go on either side of our print and then we're going to add this flower in between them. And these are going to be green. We're going to start with this green gold and I'm going to mix in chromium green. So I'm going to use two different greens and we're going to mix them right here on the gel plate. And I just want just a smidge of this chromium because it makes it more opaque. And you can tell that if you're not familiar with golden. You can tell that by the label. And this is a very opaque paint because you can't see behind the paint. Now in this one you can see. So this is a very transparent paint or translucent paint. And I'm just going to mix these two. When I mix these, I like a blotchier look on my gel plate. But if you like a smooth look, you can certainly mix these. You can go like this and it will mix those colors better. Bring my print right underneath my gel plate so I can align where I want these to be. Now, when I flip this, these are going to be opposite, but with these two little guys, it is not going to matter. And I think the other one will go over here. And then we're going to remove on another piece of paper the paint all around those two little dried plants. Doing bot botanicals like this is an incredibly fun process. There are a lot of YouTube videos out showing other people using their process. And that's looking pretty good. So let's pull that off. 
And now I have this print right here, which I'll do something with eventually. I'm going to take another piece of deli paper. Okay, now because I used the golden open, I have some time. I don't have to rush. If I were using a paint that dries quickly, then I would need to I would need to be quicker about this. I think we'll go right there and I lay it down. I'm gonna get my Baron. And I can test this to see if it's ready to pull. And it's not. So I'm just gonna let it sit and I'll be back when it's ready to pull. Let's do a reveal. Yep, it's pulling up. It's going to be very subtle because of the paint colors that we used. That green right here, you can see it, but it is fairly subtle. But that's okay. We're going to print our flower, which is going to sit right here in the center. I want to put it the opposite direction and then check. That should work. Okay. So, just keep that in my mind that that's where I want it. I'm going to use two paint colors. I'm going to use light ultramarine and ultramarine violet. Again, they're both golden open colors. Do some experimentation and see which one do you like. Now, if I want these mixed better, I would mix them, but I really like the mottled kind of look that you get from this. I think I wanted it to go this way. And I'm going to take another piece of paper and remove as much of the paint as I possibly can. I would caution you a little bit running your brayer too much over the tops of these plants because they are fairly delicate. You could damage it also depends on how you handle your plants, but also it really matters on how much, ooh, that's pretty, that's another nice print. I mean, there's a lot of variables that determines whether or not your plants survive. Basically, at some point in time, they're not gonna last forever. So, enjoy them and try to get as many uses out of, of, out of them as you want to. I keep mine after I've pressed them in my flower press, I keep them in a big catalog, which allows me to keep them relatively flat and relatively protected. Okay, piece of deli paper, that looks good. I'm gonna take this off. This is actually a spirea for anybody who was interested. And this one is actually getting a little worn. I'm gonna grab my paper. And this time, because I have no paint around my flower, I can arrange my flower wherever I want to. And I think I want it right there. And hopefully that's not going to be too light and it's going to show up. Okay, it has to sit and we have to give it time to release from the plate. I don't know if you can see that. All right, let's reveal. Okay, let's 
started to take a little bit of the paper off, but that's okay. We'll glue it back together. And there we have our print. It's a little light. I would like it to have been a little bit darker, but I can do a lot of things to this to kind of enhance it. This next process that we're going to do is another botanical where we're using a leaf that I have pressed in my flower press. It's fairly it pliable, which is fine. They, either way they work. When you do a bot botanical, you always want to look and print the side that has the most texture. So, last time I printed this side or the back side. Now I might I might try the other side just to see how it goes. And as you can see from here, what this does, you print all around your botanical and then it isolates the print that's underneath. So this works particularly well if you have a piece that's just chaotic and busy. That provides that isolation point where it focuses your attention directly on the botanical. This one I don't think is chaotic and busy, but I think it's going to be a beautiful this botanical. This is phthalo blue. This is actually a red shade. I'm going to use that to isolate my print. That should be plenty. A little bit. There we go. I can flip this over, lay it down, line it up. Go over the top of it and pull this off. Ah, that's beautiful. Look at how gorgeous that is. I like that piece of paper. Do it again because I think I have enough paint there that we can get a pretty good second print. Not bad. We can do something else with that. But let's do one more time over this. We're going to use just a piece of jelly paper. Just to get as much of that paint off of the gel plate as we possibly can. Now, we're going to have one more opportunity to print. Oh, that's pretty. I was thinking about on this one or on this one. Let's see. And I can kind of audition them right here. I think I kind of like this one. Are you voting for one? In your minds, are you voting for one? And because I'm using the golden open, I have time to do this. If I were doing using a regular acrylic paint, I would not have time to do this. I would need to grab and go. Okay, let's let's do this one. Okay. And this will have to sit. But that's what it's going to look like. All right, now this was one that I did when I was doing this one. I wanted to try a lighter blue. And I put it on the magenta that we printed earlier. So let's see if I can pull it off. And I can. And it's really, really lovely. And you can see where all of that interesting texture in the background, as well as see if you can see the gold and the white that we put on here 
it all works together to make one cohesive layered print. Okay, here's a reveal of the blue botanical. A little bit of blue left on the plate. I'll just leave it on there and let it dry. But here is the finished botanical. So the two different types, we have the isolation print, which I think is gorgeous, and then we have this one, which is also gorgeous. I wanted to show you another way to do a pickup print. We can use some gel medium. It can either be gloss or matte, it doesn't matter. Take a little bit of gloss medium. Now mine is gloss, yours can be matte, just like I said. Place it on the gel plate, brayer it over the top, but I'm going to lay this right down over the top of this. As soon as that's ready, we'll pull it up and I'll do the reveal. So here we've used our gloss gel and my, that gloss gel pulls your print right off of the gel plate. Now, this part of your print is glossy because you use the gloss gel. If you wanted to avoid that, you could use a matte gel. Just another option for you. Alright, let's talk about the difference between the Amsterdam, which is the standard series. I believe there is a more professional series, but this is the one I have, and a Blick Studio Acrylic. They're both fairly, I won't say they're economical because they're, they're a little bit more expensive than your craft paints, but quality-wise they compare nicely to the DecoArt Premium or the Fluid Acrylics. Um, they do not have the extender in them, but let's talk what happens when you want to add on to a print. Maybe there's something that you just don't like about it, like this one. I just don't like this one, or this one just needs something. Let's start with the Blick Studio Acrylic. This is Payne's Gray, and we're going to use some deli paper for this. And we're going to use this stencil, which is a Creative Arts Lifestyle. It's STCL. 692 underscore 1. It's called Colonial Mosaic. And I use this stencil a lot. I kind of like it. And again, I'm using my 3 by 5 inch gel plate. Let's lay that down. And let's use our deli paper. And again, I'm using the rougher side. And I'm going to remove as much of that paint as I can each time. And it will probably take me three times to remove all that paint. Let's do it again. All right, there's three. Let's take that off. Position this right over the top of this. This may look good, might look terrible, I don't know. Smooth it down over the top, rub it on, let's give it a minute to sit there. Let's try the Amsterdam. Now the Amsterdam is again Payne's Gray. It's a little darker, it's a little bit more on the black side for a Payne's Gray. And we'll just use the other side of this stencil. Remove my paint. And you can already see the differences in those two paints, uh, color-wise. And I'm going to do one more. Just to make sure I've picked up as much of that paint as I can get. A little bit of a shadow is kind of fun, but in this instance, I want to see not as much of a shadow. Pull that off. Let's stay it, lay it down on this one. And we'll see how each one of them works in comparison. Alright, these are ready to pull. 
So let's just pull this up real quickly. And this was the Amsterdam. It's a pretty good print. This one was the Dick Blick. Yeah, it's also a pretty good print. You can see now that both of those paints were basically equally as good. This one is a little bit darker of a Payne's Gray. This one on the other hand is a little lighter. It's more towards the blue. I would still prefer this blue to this one. I'm not a huge fan of a, a blacker Payne's Gray. I like a bluer Payne's Gray. But in my estimation you could do a lot with either one of these paints. You can use anything that has texture to create a pattern on your gel plate. It actually looks just like that. I think I got these on Amazon. This is a smaller one. I can actually use my gel plate and this paper doily to create a pattern using the premium acrylic. This is actually Quinn Gold in the premium. Spray it out. Take my paper doily and I'm just going to lay it right down over the top of this and I'm going to run my brayer right over the top of this and it's removing some of that paint and lay it down again I could use my Baron or I can just go over the top of it with my brayer either works all right big reveal for this one. And you can see how that doily kind of imprinted into the paint and removed some of the paint so we have light and dark areas. But what a cool background that's going to be. So we've looked at a number of different paints today. Again, these are only paints that I had on hand. If you have different paints that you have accessible to you, practice with them. Try them out. See what you like. Don't take my word for it. Try it out for yourself. Some of these paints you'll find work great for you. Some of them you'll find, eh, you don't really care for them. It's all based on personal preference. And next time that we meet, We'll be talking about stencils. So hope to see you come back. Have a great day.